Hello, in this video I'll be teaching you how to use place value to determine where to place the first digit of a quotient. Just a quick review of some division terms. A dividend is the number that we are dividing, sharing equally. The divisor is the number of groups that we're sharing with. And the quotient is the answer or the number that each group will receive. So 21 divided by 3 equals 7. 21 is the dividend, 3 is the divisor, 7 is the quotient. You read it left to right when you use this obulus here. When you're using this way and you have a division bracket, you read it inside out. The dividend is inside. 40 divided by 5 equals 8. So 40, your dividend is inside, your divisor is out to the left, and your quotient gets written up top. And this is what we're going to try to work on today. How do you properly place the first digit in your quotient? And you're thinking, you might be thinking, this this quotient here only has one digit anyway, but some quotients are going to have multi-digits, and we want to know what place to put them in. So the first example we'll look at is 124 divided by 2. And I'm going to start by writing uh, my problem here, setting it up, and do some long division. But I also, what I want to do is draw a picture to a company, drive home the point that um, each one of these digits has value. And when you think about the value of each of these digits and what they really mean, it makes dividing this much easier. So first, I have 100. Over here, I'm going to draw a picture of 100. I'll do that just by drawing a square, a flat. I let that represent 100. Um, I have two tens. I'm going to draw two uh, lines here. We call them longs. Two longs. They represent 10. And for my ones, I'll draw four of them. And for my ones, I'm going to draw little circles. One, two, three, and four. So for this number, 124, I have 100, two tens, and four ones. Now my goal, because I'm dividing by two, I want to share with two groups. So I'm going to draw two groups down here. One and two. So these are the two groups. My goal is to share all these pieces with two groups. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to start in my hundreds place. I want to ask myself, can I share 100 with two groups? Can I give this 100 to two groups? Well, to share with two groups, I would need to have at least two hundreds, but I only have one. So in this problem, I will not start in the hundreds place for my quotient because I'm unable to share this hundred. It has to be regrouped as tens, and so I'll start in the tens place. So I can't share this 100, so I'm going to regroup it. I'll cross it out. But it is equivalent, this 100 is equivalent to 10 tens. So let me draw 10 tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So whereas I used to have 100, now I have 10 tens. It's an equivalent amount. So as you'd see, and I already had two tens before, I actually have a total of 12 tens now. And as I said, I'm not able to share 100 with two groups, but I am certainly able to share 12 tens with two groups. And we can use our basic facts now for division. 12 divided by 2 is 6. So 12 tens divided by 2 is going to be 6 tens. Each group is going to get 6 tens. One for you, one for you. I like to share them equally this way, but I will get to a point where each group gets six. There's four a piece. I've shared eight so far. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, barely fit it in there. Each group got six tens. I've shared all my tens, so I'm going to cross those out. All my tens have been shared, and my hundred too. We, we regrouped that. All that's left now is my four ones. So six times two, I gave six tens to each of two groups, which means I shared twelve tens. 12 minus 12, anything minus itself, is 0. And I've shared all my 10s and my 100 that I regrouped. I'll bring down my four 1s, which I have to share. And again, I'm going to use my basic facts. I can share four 1s with two groups. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So four 1s divided by 2 is two 1s. Put a 2 in my 1s place, and I'm going to give two 1s to each group. 1, 2 three, and four. You can see each group got two ones. And I'll cross these out because I've shared them. And I'll multiply two ones times two groups 
equals a total of four ones that were shared. And I'm down to zero. I shared all of my pieces. And remember the first step, I wanted to see if I could share 100 with two groups. I was unable to share the hundreds, so I knew that I would not start my quotient in the hundreds place. It's blank. I would start in the tens place because I was able to share tens. Let's look at another example. 426 divided by 3. Let me write this here. And again, I'm going to draw the pictures to help us visualize what we're doing, what we're sharing. So 400s, let me draw 400s here. Draw a little smaller this time. One, two, ew, three, a little better. Four, there's four hundreds. And how many tens do I have? Two tens. So one, two, and six ones. Let me draw six ones. One, two, three, four, five, six. I usually like to keep five rows of one here and then an extra there. All right, so 426, and I'm sharing with three groups. So let me draw three circles with which I'm going to share. One, two, and three, right to the edge there. Um, so these are my three groups I'm going to share with. Let's start with the hundreds. Can I share four hundreds with three groups? Well, to share with three groups equally, I would need at least three hundreds. And I actually have four, which is more than enough to share. One, two, three, four. I can actually give 100 to each group. Each group can get 100. Let me cross out the ones that I've shared. You got shared, you got shared, and you got shared. Now you see I still have 100 left. Can I share 100 with three groups? Not as it is right now, but I was able to give each group 100. So I start in the hundreds place because I was able to share hundreds. So if you're able to share, start there. Could be a little rhyme we can use. If you're able to share, start there. 100 times 3 equals 3 hundreds. 4 hundreds minus 3 hundreds is 100. Now, I cannot share this 100 as it is. It's 100. I have to regroup it as 10 tens. So I'll draw 10 tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. And so I'm, instead of having 100, I'll have 10 tens. It's the same amount. But now it's in the right size pieces that I'll be able to share among three groups. So I'll bring down my two tens that I already have. I already had, rather. And now I have 12 tens. Actually, I forgot a step here. I'm supposed to circle this 400s, meaning I was able to share my 400s. Okay. Now when I come down here, can I share 12 tens with three groups? Again, in order to share with three groups, I would need at least three tens. Well, I have 12. That's more than enough to share. So yes, I can certainly share 12 tens with three groups. I'll use my basic facts. 12 divided by 3 equals 4. So 12 tens divided by 3 equals 4 tens. That's why we write the 4 in the tens place. I'll give 4 tens to each group. I have to really squeeze in here. I might run out of space. Ooh, that one's going to be tough. And four, you get a hundred. Let's do it here. Okay, I got fit it. And there we go. Now, each group received four tens. Four times three is twelve. And I shared all my tens. All I have now is my ones. Let me share my cross my tens off because I use those. Now I bring down my six ones. I want to share those with three groups. Remember, I need to have at least three to share with three groups. Do I have at least three? Yes, I have more than three. I have six. So I'm going to share my six tens with three groups. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. I was able to share all of my ones. Look at how much each group got. You got two. You got two. You got two. Each group received two ones. Two ones times three is six ones. I'm going to have to curve this here. Six ones minus six ones is zero. I almost ran out of space there. So I started with four hundreds, two tens, and six ones. And then I was able to um, share one hundred, four tens, and two ones with each group. Each group has a hundred. 
each group has four tens, and each group has um, two ones. And I was able to start in the hundreds place because I had enough hundreds to share. Again, if you have enough to share, start there. These are some examples you might try. Um, and if you're getting really, once you get some practice and get really good, you should be able to look at it and just think to yourself if you, where you would start. Take this example. 228 divided by 6. I have two hundreds and I'm sharing with six groups. Can I share two hundreds with six groups? Well, I would need at least six hundreds to share hundreds with six groups. I only have two. So on this problem, you would want to start actually in the tens place with 22 tens instead of in the hundreds place because you don't have enough to share. Try that with these examples and just ask yourself, do I have enough to share?